is Sunday, April 19th, 2020. This is the fifth Sunday of online worship at St. John's Lutheran Church. And this week the Holy Gospel is from John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Yes, we are still in the season of Easter. And so it is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should proclaim that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. That is the grace-filled good news that we hear at Easter, and for which we give thanks each time we gather for worship, whether virtually or in person. In this morning's Gospel reading, the newly, resur the newly resurrected Jesus appears to the disciples who are gathered together behind locked doors. His appearance brings grace-filled good news to the disciples who are sequestered out of fear, fear of being crucified themselves for being followers of Jesus of Nazareth. But Jesus' appearance brings more than just the good news we celebrate at Easter. Jesus gives the disciples his peace, saying, Peace be with you. Okay, so far, so good. Jesus is alive, and all seems forgiven, all is well. Then Jesus said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathes on the disciples, saying, Receive the Holy Spirit. He breathes on them. Why in the world would he do that? What does that even mean? Okay, now it's time for a short break and a quick lesson in linguistics. If you remember the first creation story in the first chapter of Genesis, you'll remember that in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. A wind from God. The Hebrew word that's translated wind is the word ruach. Ruach, which can mean wind or breath or spirit. So in the beginning, a wind from God, the breath of God, the, the Spirit of God, swept over the face of the waters. Any one of these translations works. 
So when we read that Jesus breathed on the disciples, think of Jesus, the Son of God, giving to the disciples the breath of God, the Spirit of God, God's own Ruach. Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And it is this incredible, challenging, mind-blowing statement which accompanies the good news that I'd like to focus on in my message. Jesus' first words to the disciples are, Peace be with you. These short words, four short words, show that Jesus had forgiven his followers. There are no words of accusation or guilt for their abandonment and betrayal just a few days before. Simply, peace be with you. Forgiveness. Divine forgiveness and its ensuing divine peace. You too have received that same divine forgiveness and peace. That's what the good news brings. We have God's forgiveness, and through that forgiveness, we are at peace with God. Now, you could say that this good news comes with a catch. Yes, we have been given the gift of forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. But we have also been given the power and the responsibility to deal with other people's sins here in this world. In fact, Jesus has given us power with the potential to change the world. By virtue of your receiving God's Holy Spirit, and each of you has received God's Holy Spirit, you have the power to forgive the sins of others on behalf of God. If you forgive the sins of others, they are forgiven them. Sisters and brothers, that is very, very powerful stuff. And I, for one, find that power to be very, very sobering. That I have the power and the authority and the charge to forgive the sins of others is awe-inspiring. Let's look for a moment at an example of the difference that this kind of power can make. You, remain, you may remember the multiple murders that took place in October 2006 in the Pennsylvania Amish community of West Nickel Mines. A heavily armed man entered a one-room Amish schoolhouse and shot eight young girls, killing five of them, before killing himself right there in the schoolhouse. Intentional, premeditated, cold-blooded murder. How can one possibly forgive a person who commits such an atrocious act of evil, especially against innocent young children? If they were my children, I think I'd be inclined to form a posse and take the law into my own hands to find justice vigilante style. The Amish community of West Nickel Mines did come together, but not to seek vengeance, or to hold a televised press conference surrounded by attorneys and demanding justice. They came together not to fight, but to forgive. As horrific as this tragedy was for the Amish families, they also knew it was horrific and heartbreaking for the shooter's family. In the midst of their grief, the Amish almost immediately reached out to the shooter's family and extended forgiveness to them. According to one online article, quote, Amish community members visited and comforted the shooter's widow, parents, and parents-in-law. One Amish man held the shooter's sobbing father in his arms, reportedly for as long as an hour, to comfort him. The Amish families even invited the shooter's widow, Marie, to attend the funeral of one of their children. Afterward, Marie herself, a, giving, a grieving widow, muttered, try that again. Afterward, Marie, herself a grieving widowed mother of three children, wrote the following 
in an open letter to her Amish neighbors. She wrote, Your love for our family has helped to provide the healing we so desperately need. Gifts you've given have touched our hearts in ways no words can describe. Your compassion has reached beyond our family, beyond our community, and is changing our world. And for this, we sincerely thank you. I tell this story for two main reasons. First, the incredible act of forgiveness on the part of the Amish community of West Nickel Mines could only have been possible through their faith in God and through the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. The Amish are a faith-filled people. They live the words of St. Paul who wrote in his letter to the Romans, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. From the 12th chapter of Romans. The Amish also live by Jesus' command to forgive. And by his example of forgiveness when he prayed from the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do, as written in Luke chapter 23. It would be easy for anyone in this situation to hate. It would be easy to hate and condemn and demand justice, by which we usually mean revenge. But through the power of God's Holy Spirit, a spirit that lives in each of us, each of us has that same power to forgive others. And the second reason for telling this story is to illustrate the difference that forgiveness can make. The reaction of the Amish community was a bold, brave, and very visible witness to the faith, to God, and to the power of forgiveness to heal the deepest hurts. Not only did forgiveness help the families of the victims to endure an unendurable calamity, but it also brought immeasurable comfort and healing to the family of the shooter. Forgiveness caused the world to sit up and take notice of the power and the strength that comes from our God, a power and a strength that can be used to promote healing and to bring about peace, a power and a strength that is unmatched by anything else in this world. I'll conclude my message by going back again briefly to the Gospel lesson from John. Notice, again, the sequence of actions there. First, Jesus appears and announces peace and forgiveness. Next, Jesus gives the disciples the Holy Spirit, empowering them for what they will need to do. Only then does Jesus give them their assignment, forgive. As the Father sent me, so I send you. And the same is true for us as well. We have received God's peace and forgiveness. As the Gospel of John says in the very first chapter, from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. We have received the gift of God's Holy Spirit and now Christ sends us into the world with an assignment to go in peace, to love and serve and forgive our neighbor, to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Open the doors we close, O God, when we fear those who worship you in different ways. Guide us to unity and harmony so that we may come to respect and cherish our commonalities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the paths we ignore, O God, when we prioritize financial gain and convenience over listening to the groaning of the earth. Inspire all to care for the world you have made, so that all living things might thrive. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the rooms we lock, O God, to those who live without a homeland or a place of safety. 
We pray that generous nations may offer refuge and peace for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the hearts we close, O God, to the cries of those in pain. We pray for those isolated physically or emotionally through incarceration, addiction, mental illness, chronic suffering, grief, pandemic, and all who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the ways of love, O God, in the pursuit of peace throughout the world, and bless the efforts of missionaries, health care professionals, activists for women and children, and relief workers, especially those who find themselves in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the way to eternal life, O God, as we remember those who have died in faith. Free us from the fear of death, that we may embrace the peace you have promised. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With gold, bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place into your eternal care all for whom we pray. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Sisters and brothers, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.